Good evening, Stevens Point. I'm Radiant Rachel Ellis. And I'm the mystical McKenna Rutmeister. This week in SPTV News, UWSP School of Education received a very generous gift. A fun and unique production of Clowns comes to campus, and President Trump announced a U.S.-initiated raid against ISIS. All of this and more when we return. UW Stevens Point's Museum of Natural History is offering weekly story times for children throughout November and December. This program allows for preschool students and their parents or guardians to spend time together while learning about animals and nature throughout story time. The museum staff and volunteers will help bring the stories to life by bringing their favorite nature books to share or by providing an activity or art project that is related to the stories. Story time at the museum is free and open to the public throughout the rest of the semester at UWSP. The museum does recommend that all participants register for the program before arriving. The program meets in the museum, which is on the first floor of Albertson Hall. Check out the Museum Visitor Center for more information. UWSP Schneekly Reserve is offering more nature programs throughout November. These programs will be led by UWSP students that are studying environmental education and interpretation. The programs will cover a variety of topics, from turkeys to deer and beyond. The reserve will be hosting two preschool discovery programs for children ages three to six with a parent or guardian. These programs will be on Fridays in November. Family nature programs are also being offered in November. All programs are free and open to the public. The programs meet at Schmeekley Reserve's vis Visitor Center and no prior registration is necessary. But most programs will be outdoors so reserve officials recommend to dress for the weather. All program dates and times can be found on the Schmeekly Reserve webpage on the UWSP website. A national fraternity on campus, Phi Sigma Phi, will be hosting a charity dinner on Friday, November 15th to support the Muscular Dystrophy Association. The MDA was formed in 1950 and works to help combat muscular dystrophy and diseases of the nervous system and muscular system by funding research, providing medical and community services, and educating health professionals and the public. The night entails a formal dinner, live music, speakers, and a silent auction. Speakers include Mayor Mike Wiesa, UWSP's own chancellor, Bernie Patterson, Miss Wisconsin Rodeo Lady in Waiting, and the families of survivors from MDA. Tickets for the charity dinner are $20 and can be purchased at the Ticket and Information Desk in the DUC until November 7th. You can follow Phi Sigma Phi on Facebook and Instagram for more information on the event. A UWSP alumna has provided UWSP's Foundation School of Education with the largest individual gift the university has seen since being established 125 years ago. Dorothea Haru's estate has gifted $4.3 million to help create the Haru Center for Equity in Education here at UW Stevens Point. The center will focus on addressing educational inequities within Wisconsin, essentially carrying on Haru's devotion to teaching children. The Haru Center for Equity in Education will offer support and prepare elementary education teachers to create an even playing field for children's education in Wisconsin. The center will also be offering 20 new scholarships for UWSP students enrolled in the fall semester of 2020 for those who will be majoring in elementary education. Currently, UWSP's School of Education has more than 1,200 students enrolled and is recognized as a leading school for educators in the country. The Women of Color organization at UWSP held a discussion on Tuesday, October 29th. People who attended the discussion were able to have some fun coloring and drinking juice while participating in an in-depth discussion on, about race on the UWSP campus. Austin Leapak has more on the story. Sip and Color was a chance for students to connect with the Women of Color organization as it was their first event of the semester outside of their weekly meetings. This organization values the experiences of its members and tries to be a support and community to those that seek one. Their president, Jasmine Brown, can personally attest to this sense of openness and community. Th that's what's important to me for women of color um, and what makes it different from all the other organizations that I'm involved with is the fact that it is an open space and it is a space to talk and it is basically like um, 
not a resource, but a support group. Me, myself, um, and women of color has really been something that has um, turned me around, or not just turned me around, but expanded, you know, who I am. And the organization is open to people just trying to improve their own conduct or even simply learn about people different than themselves. A lot of people have the misconception that women of color is just for black women, and it's, that's not true. That's far from the truth. I mean, um, we're open to everyone, you know? We le encourage everyone to come and um, explore and, you know, go on a journey with us, you know, basically. So that's what we're all about. We're all about um, having people who might not, you know, might not be used to certain a certain way of things going or a certain group of people and we're just here to educate people and not just only educate but just get to know people and let them get to know us so this is a great place for people to learn how we operate or learn a little bit more about themselves you know so I feel like this is a excellent an excellent environment for that as well as the other multicultural organizations Women of Color is planning several events in the near future. In case you missed this one, such as a possible incentive trip to Oshkosh or taking students to the Multicultural Leadership Camp. Either way, this organization's first event of the semester was just a sip of things to come. I'm here outside the Multicultural Resource Center where you can find out more about women of color. For SBTV, I've been Austin Lee Peck. Back to you guys in the studio. For more information on their future events or discussions, visit their Facebook page or check out the Women of Color page on SPIN. The Chemistry and Biology Building will be hosting another year of its annual course, Microbiology for Brewers. The course that has been happening since 2012 is not a course on how to brew beer, but a hands-on course about microbiology. This is a course that provides brewers with some essential techniques and protocols to help manage yeast and bacteria during the brewing process. The brewing course is completed in about a day and a half or within three days, depending on which workshop students sign up for. The workshop course is instructed by a UWSP instructor, Teresa Barda, a professor in the biology department. Professor Barda developed this course to help people become home brewers, and no prior experience is necessary to take the course. The next upcoming workshop begins on November 9th and will be about a day and a half. Class size is limited to 12 people, so it's based on a first come first serve basis. If you are interested in learning more about the course, go to UWSP's website on continuing education. 350 Stevens Point and the Eco-Socialists of UWSP are letting their voices be heard next Monday with their own eco-poetry slam night in the brew house. Jake Zahn takes a closer look. On Monday, November 4th, 350 Stevens Point and the Eco-Socialists of UWSP are spreading the word of environmental and social issues. The organizations will be hosting their Words to the Serve event, which will allow students to openly speak about the complexities of these issues. So my name is Jessica Anderson. I'm the Vice President of 350 Stevens Point, Environmental Activist Organization on campus. And uh, this poetry event is kind of focused around eco-poetics and basically expressing our thoughts about environmental issues and environmental injustices um, that are going on in our society. Um, it's a way for us to express those um, opinions and, and thoughts about that in a, in a creative way. In my opinion, um, and talking with the other officers, we've never done something like this, so we kind of wanted to do something different. And we noticed that there are a lot of other like poetry events going on, and, and the whole like poetry slam concept is becoming a lot more popular. Um, you know, at coffee shops for students in you know this, uh, I guess like generation, it's, it's really popular. It's something that people like to do so figure why not try it out we're gonna have slots open for people to just come up on mic um, if you want to sign up ahead of time you can contact our email which is 350 stevens point at uwsp.edu otherwise yeah if you just want to come to the event it's going to be 8 to 10 p.m ish during the regular open mic um, in the brew house jessica also believes that the event will push students to be more involved is to get some more involvement from students in our organization and other organizations on campus um, to express themselves and learn about you know how other people are feeling about environmental issues that are going on we hope that not only people that are maybe just hanging out in the audience might learn something but also the people that get up on stage um, might learn something as well 
The event will take place at the Brew House, located in the DUC. I'm Jake Zahn reporting, and this is SPTV News. For more information, visit 350 Stevens Point's Spin Event page. That's all the news stories we have for you tonight. Coming up next, we have Nate with SPTV Sports. We'll be right back after the break. Warzawa, the seventh largest book printer in North America, is hiring students for the semester. We are 100% employee owned and located right here in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. All shifts currently hiring with jobs starting at $10.80 an hour. Hours are flexible. For more information, contact the Warzawa HR department. What's up, everybody, and welcome back with SPTV Sports. I'm Nathan Wagner. The UWSP football team lost a tough game to UW South 38-31 in double overtime on Saturday in Menominee. The Pointers and Blue Devils kept the score close throughout the game until Stout capitalized in the overtime period off a UWSP fumble, throwing the winning touchdown on the very next series. Quarterback Matt Hermansky had a solid day, throwing 260 yards and three touchdowns while the Pointers' running attack struggled, rushing for only 22 yards on the day. The Pointers fall to 2-5 and five overall and 1-3 and three in conference play. They will host UW Eau Claire this weekend in the annual Spud Bowl game. SPTV will broadcast the game on the UWSP Athletics Channel with kickoff scheduled for 1 p.m. Now moving to the hardwood, the UWSP volleyball team split a pair of matches in Mequon on Saturday against Carroll University and Concordia University, Wisconsin. In the first match, the Pointers survived a second half Carroll comeback and would win in five sets but were swept in the second match against Concordia. Senior April Gale and junior Ellie Adams each had a double-double in both games, while senior Tara Emmy had a double-double of her own against Carroll. The Pointers are currently 22-8 on the season. They'll close out the regular season on Friday. UW-Whitewater before the WIAC tournament starts next week. And we have plenty of professional players at the Pointers, but if you're looking for a way to stay active this winter, the UWSP Intramurals is here to help. SPTV's Theo Meyer has the scoop. The University of Wisconsin Stevens Point Intramurals program is dedicated to providing students and our university community with a variety of op opportunities for involvement in a healthy, safe, and competitive environment. The activities enhance the college experience by promoting involvement, responsibility, sportsmanship, and fun. The Winter Block program offers many different types of basketball, volleyball, badminton, ultimate frisbee, broomball, soccer, and more. No matter what your passion is, you'll find it in intramurals. Hawken Sager, a senior supervisor for intramurals, shared his enthusiasm. Well, personally, um, I've been involved with intramurals every single semester I've been here. And it's one of the things I look forward to every week. I mean, it's so fun to get out there and play some sports against a bunch of people. People you've never met before, you make a lot of really cool little relationships and stuff. Um, while you're playing or just even watching, you can come out and watch too as well. Uh, block 3 is going to start at the beginning of next semester. Sign-ups are opening up um, just right after Thanksgiving, and they'll be open all throughout winter break, so you can sign up for your Block 3 sports then. Um, if you're not sure what you want to sign up for, you can come and watch Block 2 right now. Block 2 just started and will continue just up until finals week. For league play, Intramurals runs on a block scheduling system, which is offered twice per semester. A block is six weeks long, and a league typically takes place on the same nights and times for the entire block. All of the activities are organized into leagues. Teams for leagues can be created by those who would like to be on the same team and name a team captain, or individuals who sign up can be assigned to a team by our office. Each team or individual will pay a small fee to participate depending on the league. The intramurals office is also home to an outdoor rental program that allows the UW Stevens Point community to rent reasonably priced outdoor equipment such as canoes, kayaks, camping, equipment, backyard games, and more. I'm Theo Meyer with SPTV News. Every night, Monday through Thursday, there are intramural sports and events happening that give students more opportunities to get involved. More information can be found at the intramural office or on their website. Moving to the ice now, the men's hockey team is back as they prepare for their first official game of the season on Friday. SPTV's Rachel Ellis stepped onto the ice herself to see how the Pointers plan to follow up their big win from last season. 
Willow Arena is home to the Division III National Championship UWSB men's hockey team. The guys are up bright and early on the ice this morning, and although they may be feeling cold, they're not feeling the pressure of the season. Their strategy? Taking it one game at a time and working together to make every play count. Well, the, the winning streak was something that we never really thought about last year, um, you know, probably until the end when we had to win those games. Um, it was win or die, um, but up to that it was a one-game approach, and um, you know, it's kind of the same this year. I don't think that's the biggest thing. I think it's just the pressure that we feel and might be feeling is you know, after the year that we had. With many key players from last season having graduated or attending other institutions, it's crucial for the remaining players to step up to fill that void and take on more responsibility. It's, it's no new situation to us, but um, you know, obviously this year's got a different feel to it as far as the year that we had last year. Um, there's no denying that as much as you want to talk about it. So it's just a matter of coming up with a mindset and control and you can control, you know, not letting the outside things um, you know, creep into your head or you know, let it weight on your shoulders. It's a matter of just uh, preparing the way that we normally prepare and going out there and kind of playing with a free mind, you know, having fun and working hard and just, uh, and just focus on the moment instead of uh, you know, the outside sources or the outside things that can you know, kind of take away from that. The Pointers had their two exhibition matches this past weekend and skated away from both with a win. The team took on MSOE at home and won with a score of 3-2 to two and faced off against Lawrence University at Appleton with a score of 4-1. to one. While these games don't count towards the season, they give the team an opportunity to shake off the cobwebs and play in a low-stakes environment. Um, I think we learned a lot just for, uh, especially getting the new guys, you know, kind of rolling into the systems and uh, just understanding how we play as a team. Um, so I think that was a big positive. Plus, it was good to get the uh, pregame jitters out, uh, you know, a weekend ahead of the big games. So I think that was good. Excitement is in the air as the team prepares for the first matchup against St. Norbert on Friday, November 1st. This has been Rachel Ellis reporting for SPTV Sports. Thanks kindly, Rachel. The Pointers are looking to defend their winning streak as number three ranked St. Norbert College this Friday at Willett. The punk drops at 7 p.m. Switching to the professional leagues, the Green Bay Packers defeated the Kansas City Chiefs 31-24 on Sunday night in Kansas City. The green and gold jumped out to a 14-0 lead in the first quarter, but their lead quickly diminished as the Chiefs scored 17 unanswered points to take the lead going into halftime. However, the Packers would not let the deficit get in their heads as they had a solid second half with a couple A.A. Ron Rodgers touchdown passes and a solid defensive effort to hold the Chiefs only one more score. Rodgers looks superb once again, throwing for 305 yards and three touchdowns. Aaron Jones is 159 yards receiving and two touchdowns earned him NFC Offensive Player of the Week. The Packers have won four straight games and remain in the NFC North with a 7-1 record. They'll travel to Los Angeles to take on the Chargers for their final interconference game of the season on Sunday. The baseball season has come to an end, and the Washington Nationals defeated the Houston Astros 6-2 in Game 7 of the World Series last night in Houston. The Astros would jump on the board first in the second inning with a solo home run shot, and another one stunt scored later in the fifth gave the Astros a 2-0 lead. The top of the seventh inning is where things got hot for the Nationals as they hit two home runs to take the lead, followed by a few more insurance runs in the eighth and ninth innings to close out the series and give the Nationals their first championship. Steven Strasburg was named the World Series MVP as he won two and six in the series. It was all about the home field disadvantage as this was the first World Series in its history with the visiting team won each game of the series. So that's it for sports. Up next is Erica with entertainment. Thanks for kicking it with me. I'm Nate with SPTV Sports. UW Stevens Point is home. It's a university where professors know your name and get you involved in research. They inspire us to realize big dreams. At UW Stevens Point, sustainability is what we stand for. Our beautiful campus encourages exploration, developing new fields, and problem solving for the real world. It's a great place to launch your career. UW Stevens Point is home. Apply today at uwsp.edu. Welcome back, Pointers. Last week, the city of Stevens Point received a notice from the director of Create Portage County, Greg Wright, that they have chosen to tear down the Fox Theater and abandon their plans to repurpose that facility. The building was turned over to the Arts Alliance of Portage County by the Sanders family in 2011. Over the years, the property's entities have had several name changes. There have been ideas and fundraising over the several years, including $250,000 to assist with the project, but unfortunately, the structure has degraded and efforts to stop the declining 
has not been sufficient. Too much of a safety concern for the public safety from many inspections. The city is working to create on Fox of Main Street to figure out a last minute action to save the theater before winter, but it's not looking good. They're open to any discussions people may have to save this memorable building. Time for some royal tea. Royals Prince Harry and the Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, are covered in the news more than ever. They recently visited South Africa for a 10-day trip to help promote women's empowerment and education and many several service opportunities to continue to honor Princess Diana's legacy, Harry's mom. The documentary, Harry and Meghan, An African Journey, aired last week on ABC Network, and some think it wasn't the best choice for them to be so vulnerable. The newlywed couple have received so much attention from the start, with Meghan being American and biracial. The British tabloids have been on her case ever since she started dating Harry in 2017. It has gotten so much worse for them that they have had to sue a British tabloid company because they reported false information. Meghan has had some family trouble with her dad and sister in the news, and now being a princess that the palace is not used to. The Royal Palace has not given any comment, but from E! News with the Royal Insider Source, they say that the Royals do not say much detail about personal matters. In addition from E! News, they state people are anxiously waiting for what the palace will do and say, and what the future looks like for Harry and Meghan. They are considering to come to the United States for a long trip for a break from their royal duties. Time to go under the sea and visit part of the aquatic world of theater. Disney's classic, The Little Mermaid, will premiere a live event on November 5th on the ABC network. This special event is happening a week before the movie's 30th anniversary. The live event is directed by Hamish Hamilton. The show will be a hybrid of the movie and live performances. Instead of completely recreating the movie in a live format, the production will combine live performances with animated feature we all know and love. Even the cast are some of the beloved characters we know. Moana's Aulihi Corveo will be playing Ariel, Queen Latifah as Ursula, Shaggy as Sebastian, Graham Phillips as Prince Eric, and John Samos as Chef Louis. The cast has been working hard for months to put on this aquatic event together. The live action movie of The Little Mermaid plans to start production in April of 2020. Comedy, film noir, quirky characters, and add some clowns. This is what makes up UWSP's next production of Clown Bar. The show features singing, dancing, wordplay comedy mixed with a classic crime film style, with some clowns, of course. Clown Bar is something different the department has done in the past. The story follows Happy, the main character, who is a police detective who has been a clown. When his clown brother is murdered, he must return to the clown world to investigate all the clown cast members except happy are clowns. So there will be many different costume and makeup designs and many done by students. Something unique happening before the show, the audience should get to go to the theater to enjoy a 15 minute pre-show clown cabaret to display the fun side of clowns and so show that they aren't very scary all the time. This show is recommended for ages 13 and older due to some language and violent situations. Clown Bar will premiere November 8th to the 10th and the 14th through the 16th in the Jenkins Theater of the Noel Farn Arts Center. For tickets, visit the DUC Information Desk. That's all the entertainment stories we have for you this week. Coming up next is Austin with Point Your Politics. I'm Erica Jones with SBTV Entertainment. The Media Studies is a program for people who love to tell stories, whether that be in written form, visual, or audio. Media Studies is exciting because it's always fresh, it's always new. Media is at the center of everything we do. More and more people are asked to engage with media and use media. Our program really provides students with skills and techniques to be better prepared for that in the future. We offer courses in media production, both video and audio, nonfiction and fiction, music production, journalism, film studies. Media studies is a great way to get hands-on experience in the field that you're looking to do. They teach you the basic concept behind everything, and then they tell you to go do it. We really pride ourselves on thinking of a wide set of opportunities that we can give our students. The student organizations are a great asset. We have SPTV, the uh, student television organization, 90FM, the radio, and the pointer our student-run newspaper. It's a great way for students to get involved 
learn skills that they need for class, and meet new people. Some great facilities where our students can hone their skills. There's a giant studio in the center of the comm building. I've had quite a few classes in there. A lot of our classes are very hands-on. They're very interpersonal. You're getting the skills that will allow you to create your future, and I think that's what makes it a truly amazing experience for students. There's an incredible range of options for graduates. We've had students go out and become independent contractors, work for radio stations, newspapers, with TV stations. Everyone is different, and they have their own unique style in all the classes and all the student organizations you get involved in you have a lot of flexibility to really create your own work and do it in a way that means something to you. We're excited to see what students are making and what they want to make and how we can help students get from where they are to where they want to be. I'm in a video production class that's teaching me how to film documentaries. I'm also in a screenwriting class and I get to learn how to write movies so I'm doing all these different cool things and I love it every day. Welcome back, Pointers. Taking a look at some state news, former U.S. Representative Sean Duffy faced some harsh feedback from both liberals and conservatives after he questioned a decorated lieutenant colonel's allegiance on Tuesday. Duffy brought attention to Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman and how he was originally from Ukraine. However, Vindman emigrated from the country when he was three years old. The former congressman said that Vindman seemed incredibly concerned about Ukrainian defense. Duffy also added that he doesn't believe that Vindman is concerned about American policy and that Vindman has an affinity for Ukraine. After Duffy's appearance and comments from CNN, the hashtag FireSeanDuffy was trending on Twitter. Switching now to national news, on Sunday, President Donald Trump announced that the U.S. initiated a raid against ISIS. The raid resulted in the death of a terrorist leader. David Daniel has more. Last night, the United States brought the world's number one terrorist leader to justice, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, is dead. U.S. forces raided a compound in northwest Syria on Saturday. Syrian activists circulated video allegedly showing the aftermath. Teams removed several adults and 11 children from the site, but al-Baghdadi attempted to flee through a tunnel with three children. President Trump said the nearly two-hour operation ended with the ISIS leader cornered by dogs. He ignited his vest, killing himself and the three children. His body was mutilated by the blast. The tunnel had caved in on it. Trump said removing Baghdadi has been a top priority of his administration and wants to send a message to any of the ISIS leader's potential followers. Today's events are another reminder that we will continue to pursue the remaining ISIS terrorists to their brutal end. But even with Baghdadi dead, intelligence groups are monitoring those who might be next in line to lead the terror group. We've already got them in our sights, and we'll tell you uh, that right now, but we know the successors. I'm David Daniel reporting. Some ISIS fighters were killed, others captured, and at least 11 children were taken into custody. A historic Halloween in Washington, D.C., as the House votes on a resolution that formalizes the rule for the impeachment inquiry against Donald Trump. The vote was largely, if not completely, along party lines. Republicans say they were left out of the drafting of the resolution, and the nearly two dozen amendments they offered all failed. As John Lawrence reports, there's been little bipartisanship throughout the inquiry. President Trump showing confidence in his party, tweeting that Republicans are unified and energized against this impeachment nonsense. Supporters say Democratic officials haven't been handling this matter fairly. Unlike during the inquiries around both President Clinton and President Nixon, they've denied President Trump basic due process rights and are cutting his counsel out of the process in an unprecedented way. Critics of the president disagree, saying Mr. Trump is in this predicament because of unethical behavior including his phone call with the Ukrainian president in July. Our current occupant of the White House says, Article 2 says that I can do whatever I want. Well, that just isn't so. And politicians aren't the only ones with opposite opinions. Voters are also split. I think he deserves to be impeached. Absolutely. They're mad they lost and just trying to get him out. Looking ahead, Democratic House impeachment investigators have invited former National Security Advisor John Bolton to testify behind closed doors next week. But Bolton's lawyer says that won't happen without a subpoena. If Bolton does testify, 
He'll be the most senior witness to do so thus far in this inquiry. I'm John Lawrence reporting. President Trump has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing, saying his call with the Ukrainian president was perfect. That's all the political news we have for you this week. Now back to Rachel and McKenna. I'm Austin Leepak with SBTV Politics. Thanks, Austin. That's all we have for you this week in SBTV News. Until next time, Stevens Point, have a great night and... Happy Halloween!